How's it going? This is Neil with Efficient Automation out of Houston, Texas. I'm gonna go over a few things that uh, you should be asking your um, prospective BAS uh, provider uh, some questions on your new automation system, maybe an upgrade, a retrofit, um, or just you know just looking for for ideas. Um, so the one other part should be your graphics. So everybody has a little bit of difference in what they're looking for based on the graphics. So a company like ours, what we do is we give people like, we'll give them about five to six different sites that are actively going and we'll say, okay, look, here's the different ones that are going. We have some that are real basic where it's just showing temperature, some set points, and then it shows some animation for the graphics. <clears throat> we primarily use all 3D. Uh, graphics and then what we do is we try to tailor our graphics based on the actual equipment that is in the building so that way there's no confusion for the engineer or property manager whoever is looking at the equipment uh, even the owner uh, we do have some buildings that are owner direct and the owners take care of everything but so some of the questions you should be asking when it comes to graphics is ask for examples of active sites are they using a third party package? Meaning are they using like a deluxe or a, um, um, man, I'm drawing a blank on the other the other ones that I know of, uh, Finstack. And, and there's a few other ones that are out there, but you know, are they using a third party uh, software that's gonna be in, embedded in the system, which they do cost, the ten, they do tend to cost a lot more money. The question is, is how much money are you willing to spend? What do you, what's your end goal? And things like that. The next one is is how how detailed and how much information are you wanting? Um, now we've done sites where we have literally every point that is in a chiller and it's on a page, and but the engineers that are in this building actually take care of all the low pressure machines, so they really need to know all the detailed information that's going on with that piece uh, with those pieces of equipment. So it's all, it all depends on what you're looking for at the end of the day, what you're going for. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the biggest thing that I find is people are paying a lot of money for these third party packages when a, when a building doesn't necessarily need it. Um, now, I would say that those packages are a lot better for buildings that um, are gonna be like a campus, uh, a school, a university, um, a manufacturing facility, uh, distribution centers, things like that. There are, I've seen them. Um, I've done some work in the Amazon uh, facilities. I've done work at Caterpillar. Uh, I've done work for different shipping companies um, and even done some for some local universities here in the, in the Texas area. And so the biggest thing is, is when you're looking at what you're looking for in graphics is please show examples of the previous work Make sure that you nail down what you're getting. And then also, as they're building the graphics, have the guys show you what's going on in the beginning stages. So that way, let's say later on and you're getting to the final, the, fi the ending, and you're getting to like a commissioning uh, setup of everything, and then you get stuck with something you're not satisfied with. Because then at the end of the day, they're going to say, hey, this is, you know, we built it, we're done. Uh, we can make some simple modifications, but we're not going to redesign the whole site. So the biggest thing is, is make sure that you get to see what they have before. So there's no surprises. Make sure that you're getting exactly what you want. Ask the questions. Are they using a third party software? Um, because if you're just a, a regular high rise, um, maybe like a four or five story building, you don't need to go spend $20,000 on graphics. Um, when you can just have some nice 3d floor plans, maybe a 3d image of the building for the home page, all 3d animation and stuff like that for all your, um, you know, maybe you have chilled water DX, uh, heat pumps, water source, you know, it just depends on what's going on in your building, but there's no need to spend a ton of money on these buildings. And I just want to make people aware of that because there's a lot of people that are, that are always, um, being upsold and there's not a reason to be upsold, especially nowadays with, for instance, with us, with the Tritium software, there's multiple developers out there that we can go and talk to to have them build 
uh, our 3D floor plans. Uh, we don't have to do that in the house anymore. Um, we get some of our images. Yes, we still build a lot in house, but for some of the more complicated things, it's just a lot easier to go to a third party person and say, hey, here's a bunch of pictures of the equipment and then they break it down and they make a nice 3D image. So I just wanna give you guys some questions or, or some, some questions you should be asking your, um, your vendors that are coming into your building that are gonna be you know, trying to get you involved. Like I said also before in all the other, in the other videos, when it comes to your, to your, um, to your system itself, please do the research, ask the questions. How many companies could come work on it? Um, you know, if if you're if you're not satisfied with the service that you're getting, you know, do I go? Can I go to someone else? I would say that nowadays, with all the automation and all the technology that's out there, it's not. It, we're all on a level playing field, so it all comes down to how quality is the install, what's the quality of the commissioning. And then once, once you have a nice backbone that's in your building and you have this nice infrastructure and it's been commissioned, things will run great. And then you'll have the minor issues that go later on down the road. I have buildings that I still take care of from when I first started automation and we laid the base back in the early 2000s and all, all the equipment is still working. Have we changed out some sensors and some actuators and things like that through the years? Yes. But you can have a nice system that's commissioned properly, that's installed and working the way that it's supposed to. And then you can modify it through the years as it goes on with some of the new trends um, that are going out there for, you know, how to make your building run more efficient. Um, you know, can we do the demand load response? A lot of that's been around forever. But still it's, and then another thing is, is make sure you're utilizing your automation system to its maximum capability. I would say, honestly, probably most, most buildings that I've been in, people only utilize probably about 60 to 70% of their automation system where they're doing, they're, they are doing trends, they're doing alarms, they're doing all these other things. But are you doing things that truly monitor the building to make it run more efficient? You're putting in meters, meters help a lot. I know that's a big cost up front. But if you can look at your energy consumption that's going on in the building and then modify different things to fit that curve to where you're lessening the curve and then reducing your energy costs, now you're utilizing your automation system for what it's for. That's what we're here for, to make, uh, to make all your equipment run tighter, have more efficiency, uh, notify your, your uh, people when there's a, an alarm state. Um, and that way everybody can be more proactive. It's uh, one of the funny things is when I go into a building that has pneumatics and they're like, hey, you know, the pneumatics, they're great. They've been around forever. Yes, pneumatics are great. I love them. But the one thing I will tell you about pneumatics is, is you bump into a pneumatic stat, it's out of calibration. The pneumatic stats themselves are probably 16 to 20 times the cost of a regular wall sensor that's doing the same thing. But then as, as the... Technology grows, our stuff is getting less, um, I would say lesser expensive, but I will tell you the pneumatic cost is way higher than what it was when I first started. Back when I first started, you used to be able to buy a pneumatic thermostat for 20 bucks. Now you're paying, you know, anywhere up to $200. And then, um, so I just, you know, people are like, you know, the, you can monitor your building, you know what's going on with your space, your customers are happier at the end of the day, your clients that are in your building, that's what you're trying to maintain. You're trying to maintain that comfortability so that way no one's complaining. If the engineers are knowing what's going on and they're able to attend to other tasks to make sure that your building is operating and running at a, um, you know, at the way that you want it to, well then if you have a pneumatic system, Honestly, that guy's going to have to manually go there. Go check it out. See what's going on. It has no clue of what, what's happening. So it's the bigger picture of when you're trying to upgrade on a pneumatic system and go into a DDC is, yes, will I save money on the energy cost because I don't have an air compressor? I don't have all the air leaks. Um, you know, my guy is not running trying to troubleshoot uh, one box for, you know, I've seen guys work on one box for two to three days. Can't figure out what's going on. 
you know, the, the damper actuators, the, um, you know, the reverse and relays, the, the VAV volume controllers, all these different things. And, and they go bad. I mean, all it takes is a little bit of moisture to go into an air system and that's it. So if your dryer goes bad, you know, you could ruin, you could ruin a lot. You could ruin half your system. You could ruin, um, I've seen where one person, one, um, one customer, and this is probably about eight to 10 years ago, they were not paying attention to their air dryers and we were pulling out gallons of water out of their system and then was having to do a dry flush in order to get everything operating again. So I just want to give, I know it's kind of a little bit of a tangent that I went on, but I'm just trying to give you guys the most information, what to ask for. Make sure you're doing your research. If you have questions, shoot me a, ask, ask, shoot in the comment section. I'll answer it. I don't care. I'm the one person that will tell you or answer any question you want. Um, I have customers all the time that call me up that I don't even do work for. And I give them um, information. I give them some advice on some different things. I had a guy recently, a couple weeks ago, call me out of Oklahoma looking to put um, some VFDs on some CV-12S. And I was, you know, and, and but I asked him all the questions that nobody else was asking. Why are you putting VFDs? What, what's, what are you trying to, what are you trying to gain? Because the older chillers didn't like to be partially loaded. Those, those chill, the old train chillers love to be fully loaded. And my background helps out with a lot of the questions that people are going to ask. So please like, follow. Um, that's the only way I can help out everybody in trying to build some of these videos and trying to build up the library. So that way I can help everybody out there on what questions to ask. What am I looking for? Even some tech tips. Um, we have a bunch of different little, little tri uh, tricks and, and tips to uh, troubleshoot systems. So I just want to let everybody know, uh, please comment, like, and follow. I don't know. I'm not a big uh, into all this stuff, but I'm just here to try to help everybody. So thank you. Have a great day.